today's episode of Gearhead Syndrome. Can you reverse entry drift a front wheel drive car with no working handbrake? I don't know, today we'll find out. So the goal of this challenge is to get this RAV4 here to do a drift past 90 degrees. I think it's gonna be a little bit difficult. There's gonna be a couple things we're gonna to need to try to change to make it happen. And this is the first gearhead challenge, so we'll see how it goes. Um, right now, this car has no handbrake. So I'm going to have to try to do this with the foot brake and the accelerator. To do that, I'm going to need to apply throttle and enough brake to lock up the rear tires without stopping the front. Uh, I think that'll be a challenge. We're probably going to need to pull the ABS fuse to make it work, but we're going to find out. Um, I'm excited to try it and I think we're, uh, we're in for a fun challenge. We'll be using the Civic as an example of what we're going to try to do because it's pretty much the same thing. It's really, really fast. It's red and it's front wheel drive, just like the RAV4. Pick up some speed, foot brake, which locks all four tires, accelerator, which will make the front tires turn hopefully normally. Get the drift more than 90 degrees, have the car slide and come back. That's going to be the goal. This is the vehicle we're going to be using. It's a 2009 RAV4 with a four-wheel drive badge, but no working four-wheel drive. The drive shaft is on the floor. Uh, it's one of the U-joints went bad on it, so we're gonna try to do it just in front-wheel drive. First step today, we're gonna be putting the winter tires on because we're we're gonna need some snow to do this challenge. Um, let's find out if we even have a chance of doing this. So I can turn off traction control and I can also, if I hold the button, turn off stability control. This should allow the car to slide, but without the handbrake, I'm thinking the ABS might, uh, might give us issues when trying to get the car to slide because if we lock up the back wheels, the ABS will kick in and release the, the brake. So let's try and see if we even have a chance of doing this without the handbrake. All right, let's see if we can get even a little slide going with the brake and the throttle together. Yeah, ABS is ABS is stopping me from from getting any progress, but if you try hard enough, you can get it to slide just a little bit. We'll try it again right here. Yeah, it will work if we pull the ABS fuse, otherwise we don't stand a chance. After pulling the ABS fuses, you can see all the warning lights are on, which is exactly what we need to perform the challenge. And we still are able to disable traction and stability control. So with that done, we should be able to get the car to slide as much as we possibly want. We're essentially going to need to be doing a brake stand while driving to get this to work. Uh, so I'm going to do a demonstration of what it looks like to do one with the ABS fuses still plugged in and I'm gonna give you a demonstration of what it looks like when the ABS fuses are pulled out. First, we're gonna be doing a brake stand with the ABS fuses pulled out, and then I'm gonna show you what it's like if you try to do one with the ABS fuses still plugged in. As soon as the car sees a differential in speed between the front and back tires, it'll absolutely not let you do that, so that's why we're gonna to need to pull them out. Finally have snow now and are driving around with all our driver aids turned off. If you wanted an example of what it looks like to brake with no ABS, I'm going to show you. One thing to note is that if the front wheels are completely locked, you can turn the steering wheel all you want, but you're not going to be turning. So this is what it looks like if you're slamming the brakes on without ABS. Uh, the problem is that 
if I press both pedals at the same time, the electronic gas pedal kind of just shuts the power off. So all I'm going to show you, I'm going to put my right foot to the floor and I'm going to press the brake a little bit and I, it's just going to stop. Still to the floor, not going anywhere. I'm going to try it again. Press the brake and foot to the floor. And that's it. That's it. The engine cuts power and I'm not going anywhere. So we are going to have to rethink our strategy because this is not going to work. I think the only way we are going to get this to work is to disconnect. It sounds so stupid. Is to, to remove the, uh, the sensor on the brake pedal so that the car doesn't know that we're braking and accelerating at the same time. So. Yeah, let's try that and we'll go from there. I don't know if this feature has anything to do with the Toyota's problem with unintended acceleration. It's about the same year as this is a 2009 and I think that was about when Toyota was having all their issues. So that's probably why it's not letting me press the brake and the accelerator at the same time and it just cuts power. Um, to bypass that, there is a switch on the brake here. That's how the brake light switch works. When you press down on the brake pedal, it releases the switch. And when it clicks, then the lights turn off. So that's lights on, your car knows you're braking. That's lights off, your car knows you're not braking. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna try just to push this with my hand while I'm driving and we'll see if that lets me accelerate and brake at the same time. Uh, I know it's so stupid, I could just fix the handbrake, but to be honest, I'm kind of having fun with this. I just want to try it and I want to see what happens and we're going to learn a couple things along the way. So um, let's go for a drive, see, see if it works. I don't know how well you can see, probably not very well. So as you can see, hopefully, I press the switch with my finger. The car will never kill power. As soon as I let go of the switch. It kills it. it takes a second or so, but it kills it anyways. we're gonna do is we're gonna unplug the brake sensor here you just gotta twist just gotta twist it out it should pull right out and I don't know if you can see but there's a single connector on it we're just gonna press it and pull it out so this has an interesting uh, has an interesting side effect. You can't get the car out of park because it doesn't know that you're pressing the brake pedal with this disconnected. So we're just gonna leave it in drive and uh, just try it out. So as you can see, there's now a little bit of snow on the ground. So we're just gonna try a little warm up. Um, I've never really done this before, so it's gonna be pretty interesting. We're also gonna turn traction and stability control off just so the car will let us slide and not give us any issues. So let's try that. So we're gonna find an empty road here and just try a little skid using the gas and the brake. Let's try the first little uh, brake and accelerator slide. Slide with a front wheel drive car, you really, speed is your friend because you can't accelerate and slide at the same time. All right, let's try it out. That was better. It's not as uh, 
easy as one would think. Let's see how much angle we can get here. It's not as easy as it looks. It's definitely not as easy as it looks. Okay, we got a little slide going. It wasn't very impressive or anything. I've done a couple of warm-up passes, so we're just gonna send it, brake and gas, try to get a slide going. like past 90 to me. Using the brake and the accelerator, uh, we were able to get the car rotated. Then at one point, I was getting pretty damn close to the bank, so I let go of the accelerator completely, hard on the brakes, and that just allowed the car to like slide, keep a slide going away from the bank. And then to recover, you just go hard on the gas and the car kind of recovers itself. So that, that was uh, that was a complete success. Uh, that concludes the first gearhead challenge. Uh, the goal was to get past 90 degrees. Anything past 90 we were going to consider a win, but we got completely backwards, closer to closer to 180 degrees. Uh, so yeah, I'm really excited with the way that turned out. I can't believe how, how well that worked. I didn't even think we could get it to slide before we, uh, <laughs> before we disconnected the ABS fuse. I didn't think it was going to work and then we had to disconnect the brake sensor but turns out it was a complete success so I'm, I'm really happy with the result. So uh, thanks for watching and subscribe to Gearhead Syndrome for more content. We're going to have plenty more challenges and we're going to have plenty more videos to watch. So uh, stay tuned and thanks for watching.